Welcome back to the AP Calculus series. Uh, this is going to be unit three. We're still talking about differentiation, but now we're moving on to composite, inverse, and implicit functions. So if you haven't watched unit one and two videos yet, go back and watch those because you will need them for this unit. So let's get started with the content review. Uh, we're going to start with what is this unit about? Well, we had three main things, composite functions, inverse functions, and implicit functions. There are going to be a few other miscellaneous topics that um, revolve around this, but we're going to get to that a bit later. First, we're going to start off with these three topics. First, composite functions. A composite function is just f of g of x, where there's an inner function and an outer function. Example, square root of 2x. The inner function is 2x, outer function is square root. So how do you find the derivative of a uh, composite function? Well, you take the outer function, take the derivative of that, just plug in that inner function, no changes attached, um, into that derivative. Then you just multiply the result by the derivative of the inner function. Again, we'll uh, show examples of this at the end when we're doing uh, practice problems. For now though, just like the product rule and quotient rule, just a rule you should memorize, keep in handy, you're gonna use this a lot. Um, next is inverse functions. So inverse function, f inverse of x, that's basically a function that undoes the original function. So you can have a point um, with a as the input to this inverse function. Um, and your output would be the inverse uh, of a, the inverse function of a, f inverse of a, right? But if you're talking about the original function, the point is actually going to be inverse f of a um, as the input and a as the output. It's going to be a bit weird to talk about the input being a complex uh, expression while the output is just a nice number. But we will use this a bit uh, here. Remember, this is for f of x. If you're dealing with f of x, this is if you're dealing with inverse f of x. That's because the domain and range are switched when uh, you're converting to and fro these um, formats. So how do you take the derivative of the inverse function? Well, this rule only applies to the derivative at a certain point. In other words, the tangent line at that point. And keep in mind, this is in terms uh, of the inverse function. So we're going to use this first um, point, a comma inverse f of x. Uh, or a comma inverse f of a. Uh, so x equals a is this x value right here. Uh, the result of this is going to be 1 over f prime of inverse f of a. And so that is this x value here. This is in regards to the f of x function. You take that um, inverse f of uh, a value and you plug it into the derivative of f. Um, and this is going to give you the slope of the tangent line at a certain point. Uh, and finally, implicit. So these aren't really functions. In fact, they're usually going to be non-functions, but it's usually just when y is not explicitly defined. It's not y equals something. Usually y is entangled in the mix in the expression. And so there's three main steps to do this. Um, you have a function like x squared plus y squared equals uh, 9, right? That's just a circle. How are you supposed to take the derivative of this? It's pretty useful because you probably got introduced to tangent lines when you're dealing with circles in geometry. So how do you find the tangent line of a circle? Well, this is how. First, you take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. Uh, and so you're going to want to um, just ddx the entire equation, right? Uh, it has to be on both sides. Usually the other side is going to be constant, so it'll just cancel out to zero. Not always the case, though, so be careful about that. But one thing to note, you're going to have to use the chain rule in here. When you're differentiating an expression that has a y in it, you're literally differentiating y. Well, y can, can, be, can be considered to be a function of x. And so it's just going to be an inner function. It's just going to be a g of x. And so whenever you're differentiating that expression, you write that derivative in terms of y, and then just tack on it times dy dx to it. Um, so in this case, derivative of x squared is 2x. Derivative of y squared is 2y. But remember that dy dx, right? Because y is a function of x. And so you multiply that by dy dx, that's going to be equal to zero in this case. Now, all you have to do is solve for dy dx, and you're going to get a, um, a derivative of the original function in terms of x and y. In this case, um, just to complete this problem, I'll just show you. But you move the 2x to the other side, you get negative 2x. And then you divide by this 2y, gives you negative 2x uh, over 2y, which is just equal to negative x over y. Again, I usually don't show examples for these, but this one, I don't think it's 
easy to understand without an example. Like this, this is just a rule you should know. This is not a rule. It's just a series of steps. It's best taught with an example. Okay, now there are some interesting consequences of this. First is we can finally find the derivatives of inverse trig functions. And you might be thinking, well, yeah, because we talked about inverse functions. But no, this is just at a certain point. When we're dealing with actual functions, like inverse trig functions that are pretty common, you're going to want a formula for it. And this is just at a certain point. You don't give the actual derivative function. We want that. And that's actually going to use implicit differentiation. Um, I won't show you that in this video. It is good to derive, though. So try it at home. Hint, it uses implicit differentiation and right triangles. So draw a right triangle um, and see if you can derive the derivative of y equals inverse sine of x. Keep that in mind. Find the derivative of that. Uh, I'm going to show you the derivative, though. I'm just going to show you what it is, like write it out um, here. I'm not going to derive it, but try deriving it at home. So inverse sine of x. Again, like last video, I'm just going to throw a bunch of formulas at you. You should memorize these or at least know how to derive them. Uh, inverse sine of x is going to be 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. Uh, inverse cosine of x, right? Again, we're going through the sig trig functions, just the inverse this time. Interestingly enough, it's going to be the negative of this. Um, and inverse cosine of x, it's going to be similar, not exactly the same, though. It's going to be 1 over 1 plus x squared. Uh, inverse cotangent of x, what do you know? It's the negative of the previous one. You might be seeing another pattern here. There was a pattern with the trig functions. Now there's an even more obvious pattern with the inverse trig functions. And finally, inverse secant of x uh, and inverse cosecant of x. As you might imagine, they are just the negatives of each other. Inverse secant is pretty complicated. It's 1 over absolute value of x times x squared minus 1. And inverse cosecant is, like I said, the negative of that. So memorize these, know them. Really, there's only going to be three you need to memorize. And then just the fact that the cofunctions are going to be the negative of the corresponding function. Um, so yeah, not as bad as the other uh, formulas we learned in the last video. Final topic of this video kind of doesn't have anything to do with anything else we learned, but it's just a good thing to know for derivatives and there's nowhere else to place it. So it's just higher order derivatives. Um, and so you have f of x, right? We know about the first derivative f prime of x, which is just dy dx. Uh, the second derivative though, f double prime of x, that, that's the two apostrophes there. It's going to be d squared y over dx squared. Uh, and you can continue this on forever and ever till you get into f and then the nth derivative. That's just the number of the derivative in parentheses up there as an exponent. So like the sixth derivative would be f six of x. And so the um, other format for this is d to the power of n of y over dx to the power of n. Again, this Leibniz notation is kind of awkward, but it's still good to know you're going to see it on the AP exam more often than not. So yeah, to find them, you just take the derivative of the first derivative to get the second, a derivative of the second to get the third, and so on. It's just a um, continuous process of differentiating. So we're finally done with the content review. Let's get into the practice problems. Um, so this first example is just product rule. We learned about that last video, but this is a higher order derivative. It's the second derivative. So let's start with y equals 2x sine x. So y prime, uh, you use product rule. So first derivative of 2x is 2. Uh, sine x stays the same. Plus uh, 2x stays the same times derivative of sine x is cosine x. So you get... 2 sine x plus 2x cosine x. Okay, but that's not what we want. We want the second derivative. That's going to be, uh, this one, no product rule required, just derivative of sine is cosine, so derivative of 2 sine is 2 cosine. For this one, though, product rule is required, 2x times cosine x. So derivative of 2x is 2, uh, cosine x stays the same. And then 2x stays the same, derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. And so expanding and simplifying, we see 2 cosine x plus 2 cosine x gives us 4 cosine x. Uh, and then this minus 2x sine x right here. That's still not what we want. We want it exactly at pi over 2. So just plug in pi over 2. Uh, 4 times the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Uh, minus 2 times pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. So the, um, this is just 0. The 2 and pi over 2 just make pi uh, times the 1 is still pi, so that's just going to be equal to this negative pi, which is um, your derivative at that point. 
Okay, second question. Uh, this one looks really complicated. It doesn't say what to do, but just find the derivative uh, of this function. Uh, if you see here, we have cosine of sine of x squared minus 4. That is three functions. Uh, x squared minus 4 is its own function. Then sine x squared minus 4 is a, a composite function. And cosine of that is another composite function. So we're actually going to do chain rule here twice. Let's start with y prime of x. Um, well, that's derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we're actually going to have negative 10 sine. And then whatever that inner function is, just copy paste. We have sine of x squared minus 4. Do nothing to it. But we do have to multiply by the derivative of the inner function, which is sine of x squared minus 4. Derivative of cosine, uh, derivative of sine is cosine. That's going to give us cosine. Copy paste the inner function. Uh, but we do have to multiply by that inner function. And so we multiply uh, by 2x, which is the derivative of x squared minus 4. And that's it. Um, just multiplying by the derivative of the inner function continuously. You can do this for 4, 5, 10, uh, how many ever you want composite functions. So when you simplify negative 10 times 2x gives us negative 20x times sine of sine of x squared minus 4 uh, times cosine of x squared minus 4. Uh, it's very weird to have a sine of a sine of a function, but that's just calculus. Okay, and finally, write an equation of the normal line to the curve x cosine y equals 1 at this point. We did not talk about this, actually, uh, but it is good to know. Tangent line, like we know, is just uh, the derivative. The slope of the tangent line is the derivative. The normal line, though, is going to be the line perpendicular to the tangent line at that point. So the slope is going to be negative 1 over the um, tangent line slope. Uh, this is from algebra, geometry, pre-calculus, whatever. The slope of a perpendicular line is the negative reciprocal. Uh, and that's just the slope. We want the equation. So you use point slope form. This is the slope. The point is still the same because it intersects the tangent line at that point. Okay. Uh, and this is an implicit uh, function. So we use implicit differentiation. Let's do this. Um, first, we do derivative of both sides. Uh, we have derivative. This is product rule. X times cosine y. So we start with derivative of x is 1. Cosine y uh, stays the same plus x stays the same, cosine y derivative of that is negative sine of y, but don't forget dy dx because y is a function of x. And so this is equal to 0 because derivative of 1 is just 0. Uh, simplifying, we get cosine of y uh, minus x times sine of y times dy dx equals 0. Here, um, the negatives actually cancel out once we move cosine x to the other side. And so we're going to get dy dx is equal to cosine x over x times sine of x, which you can actually simplify using trig um, to get 1 over x times cosine over sine is just cotangent of uh, y. Um, and we want the slope uh, first of this at 2 comma pi over 3. So that's going to be 1 over 2 because x is 2 times cotangent of pi over 3. Now cotangent of pi over 3, you can use a calculator, trig, whatever. Uh, if you're allowed to use a calculator on this, that is uh, cotangent of pi over 3 is root 3 over 3 times 1 half. So that's going to be root 3 over 6. Now we want the negative reciprocal of that. So that's going to be negative 6 over root 3, which you can actually just simplify as negative uh, 2 root 3. Because 6 is equal to 3 times 2. 3 over root 3 is root 3. Uh, so it's just going to be 2 root 3. And then that negative in the front. Um, uh, and so that is going to be the slope of the uh, normal line. So we have y equals negative 2 root 3, and we do point slope form. So it's x minus 2 plus pi over 3. That's the form of point slope. You should know that from algebra and pre-calculus. So that's just the equation. We don't have to convert it into slope intercept form. This is a valid uh, format. Now, if it wasn't MC and they gave the answer choices in uh, slope intercept, then you would have to connect, uh, convert it. But for uh, an FRQ, this is fine. Okay, that's it for unit three. Uh, next unit, we're going to jump into the applications of derivatives. So I'll see you there.